This is your beef burger baconator slayer coming at you live from the kitchen and today what we're going to do is we're going to get into some heat treating. Strangely enough, heat treating knives starts in the kitchen for me. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to fill, partially fill one sink with hot water and we're going to precisely measure out some degreasing agent. Don cuts the grease. So we'll put approximately one spoonful of Dawn in here. And that'll help us cut the grease out, get all the oils, get these knives clean and ready for heat treat. So there you go, one little spoonful. That's all it takes is a little bit. Is we're going to put an anti-scale compound on here called ATP 641. What ATP 641 is going to do is it's going to block all the uh, oxygen from the actual steel itself. Making it so that way we don't get any of that uh, scale. It's an anti-scale compound. Imagine that. We don't get any scale from it. back to the garage today we're going to be doing the second part of the heat treat last night we got the knives all cleaned up and coated with the anti-scale compound you can see them hanging there like a bunch of wind chimes so today we're going to be doing the actual heat treat itself what we have is a little forge that I made some vegetable oil, set of tongs, railroad spike used to get the vegetable oil heated up, some spare propane, and 
some not spare propane. I'm going to be going through probably both of these bottles today. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Each of these bottles is probably three bucks at Lowe's, Home Depot. So, let's get her started. First things first, a little bit of safety. You're going to want to wear eyeglasses. And later on, you're going to want to have a, a thicker glove, like a welding style glove. So all this is doing is getting the uh, oil nice and warm. If the oil's too cold, if the oil's too cold, it'll be too much of a temperature change, and it'll cause the knife to, to uh, crack. Put this in just like that. I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute. Let the whole thing get nice and warm and then when it starts really heating up we're going to pull it back and forth in front of the flame back and forth reason being is if you leave it in one spot too long that spot will actually start to melt it's it's crazy just this propane tank in this little forge how how fast it gets things hot oil we're not going to move it side to side we're going to move it up and down if you move it side to side it's going to cause one side to cool faster than the other you're going to want to go up and down or back and forth not really up and down like in and out of the uh, liquid you're going to want to go back and forth along the blade that way there you get a nice even uh, quench you get the good harden if you go side to side you can either warp the blade by causing one side to cool faster than the other, or you could even cause enough stress to crack it. <laughs> Bam! Now you can see there that even with the anti-scale compound, you can still see that it was nice and, and red hot. Which is one thing I liked about, I really like about this anti-scale. Now, if you want to do the file test. What you can do is pass a file over it. If it just skates over, you're good. If it bites in, you're no good. And this right here is just skating over it. You're not biting in at all. So this has been properly hardened. This is very hard and very brittle right now. That's it. That's this part of the uh, of the uh, hardening process. After we harden it, uh, we're going to put it in an oven. We're going to do two temper cycles, 400 degrees for one hour. Let it cool down. Bring it back up, 400 degrees for one hour. What I normally do is I put it at 410 degrees, just because you're going to have small temperature fluctuations with the uh, oven sensor turning the, the heating elements on and off. So what I'll do is I'll put it at 410 degrees and I'll put it on for like an hour and five minutes or an hour and ten minutes. And reason being is I want to make sure we, we get some of that hardness out. I've had blades snap before because they were too hard. And when I'm, I'm not joking, I've had blades snap before because they were too hard. This was a learning experience. So actually at my, my day job, we have metallurgists that work there and I went and talked to him about it and he, he, uh, he's the one that said, this is what you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna do two temper cycles, uh, 400 degrees 
for an hour each. Let it cool in between. So. And boom. sure that I'm getting a good good quench as you can see nothing skates right over so next step we're gonna bring her inside after all these cool down a little bit I'm gonna bring them inside use a scouring pad real quick and clean off all the schmoo set these in a pan put the pan in the oven 400 degrees two temper cycles, one hour. And as we talked about earlier, I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I'm gonna do 410. done as you can see they have a beautiful straw yellow color so we hardened it we heated it up really really hot and we quenched it and that quenching freezes the stress freezes it where it's at freezes the molecules it makes it very very hard but it makes it very very brittle put it in the oven and you let it soak at 400 or for this the the proper soak is at 400 for uh, two cycles of one hour. And what that did was it took some of the stress out of the metal and basically made it softer. It's hard enough to hold an edge, but it's soft enough that it won't just break all the time. It's not brittle anymore. What it does is it gives the knife certain qualities that make it more useful. So if you were to take this and baton it into some wood, it it won't just bend. It's not soft enough that it would just bend, but it's not hard enough that it would just break. And I'll give a quick example of that. So here's a piece of 2 by 6 right? And here's just one of the knives, right? Here's another one. As a matter of fact, I'll even get a little bit of a hammer action going, so you can see. See? Nothing. Nothing's done to the tip. This one's got a much thinner tip, because I did a false edge grind on it. Right? Watch. Look at that. Pulling out chunks. That's a good heat treat. Okay? I know what you're saying. Well, you're not gonna hammer that thin one. Oh, I bet you don't know what an idiot I am. Look at that. Chunks. Then, look at that. Thin ass tip. It doesn't bend, but it also doesn't break. 
That's what you want. That's a good temper. If this hadn't been hardened, this would bend. If this had been hardened but not tempered, it would break. This has the perfect uh, combined qualities of being hard enough to not bend but soft enough to not break. That is what you want in a knife heat treat. That's a good heat treat in my eyes. And judging by this, I would hope you would agree. Stop. This has been your Beef Burger Baconator Slayer, coming at you live. Oh, shit, there's even a screen. <laughs> coming at you from the garage.